Greetings, comrades, and welcome to the Eastern Border. Today, I've uh, I've done some some crazy things and moved out a lot, moved about a lot, and um, and as this day has been actually quite quiet on the on the war front itself, I would like to talk about um, the human cost more. First off, about the war. Again, and this is from Igor Girkin, because I always use the Russian size sources. Russian side sources because uh, then I do not over embellish and give false hope to anyone. I think it's important that we use the sources of um, of the other side that we don't want to win to explain the situation. From his perspective, some minor tactical achievements have been acquired by Russian forces. Ukrainian forces, however, have gone to, into counterattack in the northern regions and have achieved some some tactical successes themselves. And Igor Girkin, uh, my nemesis, and at this point, best source of this show, has stated that if Putin doesn't change his tactics completely and refocus and remobilize and do something, then total defeat of Ukrainian forces becomes impossible. Although maybe the tactics have shifted to slow demolishing of Ukraine, total extermination. Which is why I want to turn to, um, to the human part of all the situation. Since Russians had opened um, these so-called corridors for civilians to evacuate, however, they opened them only towards Russia and Belarus. Yeah, good civilian uh, corridors to evacuate to to the invading countries. Furthermore, besides this hypocrisy and this total stupidity, it turns out that um, Russians broke the ceasefire that they had they had offered last time to evacuate civilians. This time, however, they somehow managed to turn this whole situation even worse. I mean, it's hard to even imagine and comprehend how worse, uh, how, how can you make this whole situation even worse. But yes, you can, if, if you're the Russian government, if you're Putin. Because turns out that the evacuation routes that Putin just opened, and, you know, he might have, might have uh, done something about the ceasefire yesterday, and, you know, ordered some shellings. Yeah, today, apparently, those evacuation routes remind you to Russia and Belarus. Yeah, they were mined. I mean, this is just beyond insanity. But the human costs, again, it's it's bearing down on civilians because Putin's new strategy calls for bombardment of factories, bombardment of, of places where people work and, and, and how they operate and everything. And and after I've witnessed that myself firsthand, I I, I simply can't remain non-biased. I'm I'm gonna try to, but no, just no. Because I've I've seen the refugees with my own eyes now, and I've seen what what they've been going through. I I tweeted a thing that really really crushed me today. I was driving on a train, cause cause right now I'm 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 going back to Warsaw for for a bit and. And on the train, I was, uh, the train was full of refugees. I, I paid for my ticket and everything, and I was sitting there, and and uh, those people, you know, the refugees, they were just in, in the wagon, and and a little boy, uh, about ten years old, he sat next to me. And we just spoke a bit, and I offered him some some because I had bought I had bought uh, some 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 soda for the trip and everything. And I offered him some and everything, and he was like, no 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 no, I'm, I'm fine. And he's sitting at his smartphone constantly, and I thought he was like watching, watching some cartoons or something, because his mom was sitting just you know a few seats in front of us, and and together with his older brother. But then he starts crying at one point, and and I look at him, and I know that he's, and he's just you know on his phone I can see that he has like multiple tabs open. And they're all news, they're all news about the war. He's ten, and he's reading. Ukrainian news sites about what's going on in Kharkov because turns out he's from Kharkov and he was crying because he pointed out to me that the very building that he used to live in that was bombed and that he now has nowhere to go back to and that he's in Poland now and and I just you know I had some sweets that I had left because I, I I bought a bunch of sweets to to give out refugees and I hope I hope that you know the the charity organizations deal with them but I gave all the sweets that I could back to him because uh, that was all I could do in the train. But to think about the fact that um, the kids who are like age 10, they should be watching some superhero movies or whatever. No. 
by his eyes, I could see that he's about my age now, mentally. I'm 32. I, I've seen a lot of things in the 90s. This kid, what he's gone through, yeah. You know what? When I say donate to those charities, please do. This this isn't about politics anymore. Not not to me personally at all. Maybe, maybe uh, some people have said that, oh, if it wouldn't be happening in Europe, we wouldn't be paying attention to it so much. Maybe that's true. Maybe maybe there is something to it because there's a little tiny thing that a lot of other people are afraid to admit. They're all somewhat evil. I I don't buy into the Western idea of, of natural goodness of man, that people are just can't be will be kind to you if you let them to. No people are selfish, people are evil. I um, you know, quoting the movie Seven because that's one of my favorite movies. Ernest, like quoting that movie, William Summers said the guy who was played by Morgan Freeman in that movie stated that um, Ernest Hemingway has said that this world is a nice place and full with good people and is worth fighting for. I agree with the last part. Well, I agree with the last part as well. This is not a nice place. It has never been. Call me cynical or jaded, but um, if you open TV tropes, you'll find a trope called Knight in Sour Armor. I think that kind of describes me at this point. It's pretty bad and, and horrible, but I just don't think that 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 this should be happening at all. But um, you know, this this made me think a lot. If you see it with your own eyes, if you, if you just experience it, then it hits home different. Another thing that hit home different to me was the fact that I, I saw a tweet from two thousand and eight, where little kids from Georgia were protesting that war which happened when Russia invaded Georgia back then. And um, and now those kids have grown up, and they're protesting war again. And that hit home to me as well. But yeah, you know what? We're all, we're all a bit selfish. We like our own social groups and everything. So yeah, I, I do fully admit that I feel this conflict way more than I would feel conflicts in other parts of the world. But at the same time, I can understand them way more. One good news that has come out of this is that um, EU is strongly considering buying more gas and other resources from Africa, which is a good thing. It might be beneficial to everyone, because African countries, I always remember Ghana and Kenya, because those guys were the ones to f speak up first. They knew. I think that supporting African economy by buying gas from them would be nice, and we have to have to do something. I am a pro-nuclear power, by the way. I agree with Elon Musk also stated that maybe maybe reshifting our policies would be a good idea in this case. I think nuclear power can be made safe and reliable. And most importantly, it's long lasting and, and I believe that it is the future once we can make it. Because I wanna see I wanna see humanity go go into space and everything and we will need power for that. I believe that nuclear is at least one of the ways that we should go. Besides all the alternative energy sources like wind and solar, I fully support those too. I just think that for large-scale production, nuclear is still still good. Now, of course, things can go wrong, but I think they can be made really safe. And uh, yeah, like about the shelling and everything, I'm sorry if this episode is shorter or more emotional or, or something, but I have now seen things and... Of course, they leave an impact. They, they leave a horrible impact. And all the bombings and everything, you know, when when you when, when you see a little kid who is just, you know, hugging your leg to say thank you just because he thinks you've saved his life, but all you've done is just go to the, go to the border, go slightly inside Ukraine to pick him up, and, and then you just have taken him to a place where he can stay overnight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm sorry, but that changes something. It changes the attitude towards life. And, and like, I don't really know. I, I don't think that the people in Russia who are now protesting pro-Putin and basically turning the new large Z letter into a modern-day swastika, you, you just Google it up, uh, like, people supporting Putin with the Z letter, they're really, they're, they're marching and they're acting exactly like Nazis did in 1939. And that's scary. I mean, that's really scary and this shouldn't be happening. But yet, here we are. This is one of the things that what I don't like about people who are 
super critical about, oh, if we only would have done this, we could have avoided it. Yes, yes, probably. But what's the point now? We can think about not making the same mistakes in the future when we've dealt with this situation. I also firmly believe that once once this situation is dealt with and the world is still unified, we should maybe try to try to focus our attention while we're still at it and still together and still not, you know, fighting over who gets what piece of, piece of oil or something to fixing some other world problems. I don't think that that once we've done with with Ukraine and once we've once we've managed to make sure that Ukrainians remain free and safe, you know, there's going to be a humanitarian crisis anyways in Ukraine and the rest of the world and in Russia as well. Well, what's going to remain of Russia? Because I'm still. I think that if if Ukraine holds, and even if there's a coup, then Russia as a geopolitical entity, I honestly think it's very plausible that it falls apart. We're going to have to deal with that as well. There's going to be a lot of troubles. This is not going to be an easy decade. At least, at least a decade is not going to be easy. And um, and that is scary. I know that for one, when this is over, I'm going. To Ukraine and talking with my friends there, Viktor Yatovchenko from Vata TV. He he still makes some comedy shows, and I want to meet him again in person. I was supposed to, I'll, and I will also go to whatever is remaining from Russia, because unless you know, un- unless unless some weird things happen, I honestly don't, I don't make any predictions that Russia is going to stay in the same same way as it is. Unless a revolution hits, but that's impossible. Because even now, like, there were anti-war protests in Russia, and they're becoming more and more active, and right now over 9,000 people, and I know it sounds like a meme, but seriously, more than 9,000 people have been arrested in Russia in those protests. People have been beaten up, and some of them turned on their phones while they were interrogated, and a feminist activist from Russia, already not in the nicest group, but you have to kind of imagine that in a country where they have a ridiculous amount of actual problems with equality and everything whatever your view on western feminists may be in russia they're you know actively fighting for very basic rights because russia has insanely high domestic violence rate for one i'm not making a political statement here just saying that you know so that you wouldn't think something bad if you don't like your country's feminists that, that's what i'm saying basically Sorry, my head just doesn't work. I'm I'm trying to be nice. Um, so yeah, that 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 woman was um, she was beaten up terribly, and she recorded that on her phone. Thankfully, that wasn't taken away from her, and and you can hear in that recording where she says when well, she's getting beaten up, and she says, "I plead the fifth. Uh, well, Russian analog of the fifth, and Russia it's fifty first. And then she's just getting beaten up again, and I've seen pictures of people whose heads have been broken into in Russia. And 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 all this all this stuff that people just are going against the war that gives me some hope, not much hope, but maybe some hope. I believe personally, currently, that well, unless a global thermonuclear war starts, which I don't think it will, then um, there's probably going to be a coup in Russia, and after that, the local governors, the viceroys, because Russia is still a kind of a colonial empire in my eyes will just start to declare independence as to not get involved with this mess and continue basically robbing their people from resources. I don't have a positive solution to this at all. I'm tired and I'm sad and I'm trying to record this before I go to sleep finally. I'm ridiculously tired. We'll get over this. Well, once once I'll get more military news, I'll let you know. But today, I want you all to think about the human cost and the fact that this is real. And that... You're listening not to someone who's far away, but to someone who's actually seen these horrors. This is this is not something from 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 a movie or a book. And I'm pretty sure that someone's going to make a Hollywood movie out of Zelensky later on, or 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 a video game or something. But oh, these are evil, real people and real fates. And it's maybe maybe it's time to kind of take this whole thing seriously in a way, because for one. One thing that I advocate for is that that Putin he takes he just breaks all the possible agreements and rules and laws, right? And he accuses the West for doing the same. He has this Panyatia mentality, you know, the criminal mentality where he considers that negotiating is a form of weakness. So 
you know, if you can't give fighter planes to Ukraine, how about United States Department of Defense or whatever, donate some um, A-10 planes for me as a NATO representative, as a private citizen of Latvia, NATO member, for my private collection. I'll, I'll, I'll take them all in. I mean, I, I, I've, always, I've always wanted some fighter planes and bombers too and whatever. Give me a submarine as well. I, I want a submarine. And I even promised to go to the cops next day and report them missing. I will honestly have no idea where they have gone. Swear to God. Thing is, there are sneaky and cunning and less noble ways how to deal with the situation. But I'm a jaded cynical. And I believe that our noble ways have gotten us to the point where people who are more sneaky and cunning have now started this. Maybe maybe there are ways how to sneakily abuse loopholes. And maybe, maybe we should look into what loopholes we can abuse ourselves. Because honestly speaking, well, you can yell about escalation of nuclear war, nuclear war all you want. However, what do you think Putin cares about nuclear war? What about his steps of escalating this? What about consequences to that? I don't think he's going to push the button, though. Because seeing how they're importing now third-rate civilian vehicles for reinforcements... Yeah, you know what? Just look at the other side of the coin. Look at the Putin side. Think about the human suffering and everything. There are ways how we can be sneaky, too. Maybe that's not the way of the West, but... Well, maybe it's time the West learned a thing or two from us here in Eastern Europe. Welcome to the Eastern border. We don't like rules. <laughs> okay, now. До свидания, товарищи. I'm gonna carry on with all the situation. Please follow me on Twitter at Eastern underscore border if you don't already, but probably do. And uh, if you want, you can support the show through uh, clicking the donate button on their homepage or just in our Twitter, we added this button too. Well, my IT guys added that, so that's that's nice. Uh, sorry about the ads again. And uh, you, you can also become our Patreon. I'll, I'll just stop talking.